Up, you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube, and today we're in the brand new 2024 Mazda 3 sedan, courtesy of Hanover Mazda in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because all-wheel drive is actually available. Of course, the Mazda 3 is known to be a very fun car to drive as well, and it's going to be competing with other cars like the Civic, like the Corolla, like the Elantra just to name a few so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Mazda 3 sedan first one being the base starting at 24,170 select sport which is the one we are in today starting at 24,690 preferred for 26,190 carbon edition for $29,060 then there is the carbon turbo for $31,750 and lastly the turbo premium plus going for $35,450 and so the way that works I said all-wheel drive is available for those last Last three trim levels all-wheel drive comes standard for the first three trim levels front wheel drive is only available so that is how that is all set up but as you can imagine with all of these trim levels there are a couple different power plants for the Mazda 3 sedan first one being the one we are in today belonging to all of the non-turbo trim levels of course that one is powered by a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 191 horsepower to 6,000 rpm 186 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic zero to 60 time for this one approximately seven seconds flat red line coming in at 6500 rpm with mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 37 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the turbo trim levels that one is powered by a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 250 horsepower with premium unleaded fuel 227 with regular unleaded fuel but then 320 pound feet of torque with a premium unleaded fuel 310 pound feet with the regular unleaded fuel so that's kind of interesting but power being set to all four wheels through a six speed automatic zero to 60 time for that engine approximately 5.6 seconds that is plenty respectable there red line 6300 rpm with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 32 on the highway that's still kind of impressive taking regular or premium unleaded fuel but so now before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Mazda 3 sedan I do want to mention to you guys there is a sport driving mode and that is a silver toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter you just press that up and then it's going to display a little orange sport icon within the digital portion of the gauges letting me know I am in that sport driving mode adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response and now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find straight away let's put the acceleration here to the test and Let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Mazda 3 sedan here up to speed. All right, here it is, you guys, in three, two, one, go. <laughs> it's wet out, what do you expect? <laughs> Honestly, zero to 60 is seven seconds flat, though. That's kind of respectable. Uh, that's pretty darn quick. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway, but, if you live in an area where it rains a lot or it snows a lot, maybe all-wheel drive is an option you may want to consider. And that's cool that the Mazda 3 offers the all-wheel drive because not all compact cars offer all-wheel drive. This is one of the few actually, so it's pretty cool, but you will sacrifice MPGs a little bit if you go with that all-wheel drive, but still, you don't want to slip like I just did. But anyways, that wasn't actually that bad. I still had somewhat decent traction, so it didn't bother me, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and actually the braking is dang good in the Mazda 3 sedan so here's why four wheel disc brakes do come standard of course as expected these days but 60 to zero stopping distance that comes in at 112 feet so typically with sedans you find 120 125 somewhere in that ballpark so 112 feet that's definitely a sports sedan number right there that is a brilliant number when it comes to stopping as far as braking feel goes it does immediately bring you to a stop i love the braking feel too it's not a super firm braking feel but it's not like a squishy braking feel either it's just right it's the perfect braking feel for the mazda 3 sedan i'll just put it that way but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle as far as ride quality goes 
It's actually not been that bad on my short little test drive here today. So it's absorbing Hanover's road imperfections quite nicely. I will say, I remember driving over the super bumpy roads that we just went over there with the Civic. You felt everything with the Civic. I can tell you at least the Mazda 3 sedan is a much better ride quality than the Civic. I'll just put it that way for what it's worth. But as far as steering feel goes, that's where Mazda crushes it every single time. It's weighted on the heavier side of things. It has such a nice feel to it, instantly pointing you in the direction that you want to go. So if you want a car that's going to be a little more enjoyable to drive compared to some of the competition, the Mazda 3 sedan is definitely a solid pick and the Mazda 3 hatchback for that matter. But I already reviewed that car. But yeah, it's an excellent steering feel in the Mazda 3 sedan without a doubt. As far as cabin noise goes, as we're going nowhere, sitting at a stop sign right now, it's pretty good. So anyways, um, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. I actually get a little bit of rain noise because it's raining, but other than that, the road noise and uh, the wind noise coming into the cabin, it's really non-existent. It's pretty darn good. So going over some rain right now, but other than that, it's brilliant. I definitely don't have any issues there. Then touching on rear visibility because this is a sedan and not the hatchback, that's the big difference between the two, the rear visibility. The blind spots in the hatchback are absolutely insane. But if you wanted to get rid of that, you got the sedan. This is brilliant visibility in this Mazda 3 sedan. So definitely not gonna have any issues there. Did wanna also mention though, another big plus when it comes to forward visibility is that rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board. So I have them on right now actually. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on the windshield wipers so I don't have to keep adjusting the intermittentness if that's a word because of the, you know, how heavy the rainfall is. So just keep it on that automatic mode. You don't have to worry about it. You can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive because it is an enjoyable drive here in the Mazda 3 sedan. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mazda 3 sedan. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Mazda 3 sedan finished in sole red crystal metallic. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Mazda 3 is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number three, indicating that the Mazda 3 is built and assembled in Mexico, actually, as a lot of vehicles have been lately that I've been looking at. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Matte black front grille coming standard with that base trim level. However, all other trim levels will find a gloss black front grille, in case you were curious about that. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. You do get the automatic feature along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. But if you went with the turbo premium plus trim level i will say you will also get an adaptive front lighting system that is a safety feature in itself so when you're going around a bed at night the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bench so you're less likely to hit an alien or a sasquatch or whatever the case so that's pretty darn cool but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the mazda 3 sedan good looking side profile actually but chrome upper window trim does come standard taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored or gloss black side mirrors they will be power adjustable select sport trim level and up is going to give you heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals that's what you guys are looking at of course and the memory settings coming with the preferred trim level and up then taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch alloys is going to come with that base trim level however all other trim levels are going to get 18 inch alloys in our particular case it's finished in gloss black so that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one black rear spoiler coming with the turbo premium plus trim level only if you wanted a rear spoiler that's how you're going to go ahead and get that but should have probably mentioned there's actually no body colored shark fin antenna or any kind of antenna up top so another clean look much like mercedes-benz and bmw does so definitely a big fan of that led tail lights do come standard on all trim levels across the board gotta love that also just below Thank you Mazda for exposing the exhaust. They look amazing, but dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, 
Alright, so Benel, since we are around to the back of the Mazda 3 sedan, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There's actually also a kind of hidden button on the trunk itself. It's located on the bottom portion of that Mazda logo. So if you kind of feel underneath of that, it is a rubberized button. So you can open it up that way as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, there is a 60-40 split. And there's actually some levers in that cargo area to fold down the rear seats from there if you wanted to. But of course, you got some cargo lighting back there as well. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which you guys know I always love to see. But then make your way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 35.1 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders. If you wanted that, you got to get the select sport trim level and up. Hence the reason we have it today. So got to love that. But a couple things that I did not see. Uh, no USB charging ports, unfortunately, and no rear ventilation but having said that none of the competition gives you rear ventilation either so no big deal there because nobody else gets it so anyways then make your way up to the front seats cloth seating coming with the base trim level leatherette seating coming with our select sport but also the preferred trim level two leather seats coming with the carbon edition trim level and up then power adjustable driver seat for the preferred trim level and up memory settings for the preferred trim level and up and heated front seats for the preferred trim level and up as well that preferred might be the sweet spot but overall as far as see comfort goes it was actually pretty nice so in the the kind of side bolsters they kind of hold you in place around the turns too so i kind of liked that so as far as seat comfort goes it was perfectly fine for me i'll just put it that way but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the select sport trim level and up and then it will be heated if you go with that top trim level the turbo premium plus but then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your mazda logo on the one side but all of your buttons are located on the side of the key the lock unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply just put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of that climate control information but then once started up when it comes to that gauge cluster it is a seven inch lcd display front and center tachometer is all the way to your left fuel information is to your right but the cool thing is there's an info button located on the left side of the steering wheel and that is where you can kind of change the look of the middle digital portion of the gauges if you wanted to you could choose to display a digital speedometer with some safety information if you wanted to or if you press it again you got that full analog look although it is a digital screen still so that is a pretty cool little setup that they got there of course you got outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's trip a trip b so basically everything else you would want on the uh, digital portion of the gauges i guess but then making our way to overall interior quality if you wanted a power moonroof go with the preferred trim level and up that's why we don't have it with us here today overhead sunglass holder for the select sport trim level and up we got that dual zone climate control also select sport trim level and up so both driver and passenger can set their own individual temperatures there frameless rear view mirror with home link for the turbo premium plus trim level only but just in front of the shifter you got a little bit of uh, storage there you got a couple cup holders surrounding the shifter mazda finished that in a gloss black finish i love that a lot of manufacturers like uh honda and toyota for example will finish that in a matte gray or a matte black plastic but mazda finishes it in gloss black which i love then within the center armrest there's actually a decent amount of storage there more so than the corolla i know that a couple usb charging ports in there as well so that's definitely working for me but overall i think mazda did a really good job with the interior finishes here a lot of soft touch material got some contrast stitching found just above the passenger side glove box as well as on the doors so yeah i definitely don't have any issues with that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen there's essentially going to be two different screens you got an 8.8 .8 inch infotainment screen for the non-turbo trim levels and then you got a 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen so slightly larger for the turbo trim levels but either way though it's controlled by using the circular dial and buttons located just behind the shifter it's not a touch screen somebody's always going to ask that it's a little bit too much of a reach for it to be a touchscreen anyways but i will say it's super easy to use so it's easy to get used to it's got bluetooth and audio streaming of course android auto apple carplay it is going to be wireless android auto apple carplay for the carbon edition trim level and up by the way you could check out your fuel economy if you wanted to up there as well as your radio information of course so when it comes to the sound systems there's actually three of them so you're going to find six speakers for the select sport and preferred trims 
eight speakers for the Carbon Edition and Carbon Turbo, and then a 12 speaker Bose sound system for the Turbo Premium Plus. So we do have that six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, so first let me start by saying that was FM radio again. It wasn't like crystal clear Sirius XM. My phone wasn't connected to the car or anything like that. So for that reason, clarity wasn't the best. Maybe it would have been better if, you know, there's situations where there, but the bass, I could feel like the bass was pretty darn good for a six speaker sound system. But uh, with FM radio, clarity not that great. I think it would probably be better with the Sirius XM. So I'll just put it that way for now. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Mazda 3 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera 360 degree monitor actually does come on the turbo premium plus of course we don't have that but it is pretty high definition so i didn't mind it but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so let me start with my favorite part iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest rating given by iihs that pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks top pressure monitoring system but also coming standard lane departure warning lane keep assist adaptive cruise control with stop and go driver attention alert and actually a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert you usually don't find that coming standard so well done Mazda but overall when it comes to my final thoughts on the Mazda 3 sedan excellent safety I love starting with that especially if you're gonna have kids in the back or anybody else in the car and or even yourself still you want to be safe that's all I'm saying so it doesn't get better than an IIHS top safety pick plus the steering feel the driving dynamics are amazing in the Mazda 3 and typically most Mazdas will give you that it's an incredible steering feel 60 is here with 112 feet incredible braking as well so just great driving dynamics all around I love that all-wheel drive is available for the Mazda 3 as well. You can't say that for the Civic. I'm just saying. So anyways, as far as room for improvement goes, I would probably add some multicolor ambient lighting. And I always say this with Mazda, the, the 10 and 2 grips, as far as the steering wheel goes, they're kind of small. So they kind of remind me of like a Volkswagen Beetle. So if you're driving a more enjoyable car to drive like the Mazda 3, Typically, you have a little thicker grips, kind of like BMW M cars or really any kind of sports car, they have thicker grips. And this kind of feels like you're driving a sports car to a certain degree. So Mazda, if you're watching this, just thicken up the grips a little bit and then I'm happy. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Mazda 3 sedan in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here in this channel after all. All. do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>